Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. As you'd be aware, there was a COVID ready committee meeting this afternoon. Uh, I can say that uh, there was generally a high level of consensus in relation to the steps that we're likely to be taking uh, as an outcome of that meeting and I'm happy to outline those changes for you now. It's relatively straightforward what we're announcing today. As of uh, one minute past midnight on Saturday the 12th of March 2022, all density restrictions across all public activities are being removed. This includes the density cap for home gatherings and there will be no restriction on singing or dancing. We're also reducing the requirement for QR codes QR codes will still be required in most of the, the, the defined public activities, however they are no longer required for recreational transport, auctions and inspections for properties that are for sale or rent, public transport, taxis and rideshare and education facilities. The CRC committee also heard from Professor Spurrier regarding isolation requirements for people who are COVID positive and there will be a change from the requirement to isolate from 10 days down to seven days for some groups of people. And SA Health have indicated that they will be making direct contact with people who are currently isolating as COVID positive people and providing specific advice to them over the next couple of days. There will be a further CRC meeting next week where we'll be considering uh, in more detail the requirements regarding close contact quarantine requirements and the requirement to wear masks in indoor public places. Happy to take questions. Given that there was a recent spike in COVID cases, why are you making these changes now? Uh, I think we've said before that we've always expected that we'd see fluctuations in the daily case numbers, but the critical uh, indicator for us is uh, the number of people being hospitalised on a daily basis, and that is has reduced substantially and remains low and consistent, which is a, a strong indicator that the system is able to cope, regardless of the number of positive cases. That tells us that whilst people may be contracting COVID-19, uh, they are not becoming terribly sick with the virus, requiring that intensive medical support, uh, which gives us the confidence to be able to make these changes. Can you explain the isolation um, the position for COVID positive patients? So it's currently 10 days, it's going down to seven. Is that for all people? No, it's not for all people. There will be certain groups of people who will still need to um, seek specific advice from SA Health. They would be people with uh, comorbidities, uh, vulnerable groups uh, and certain others. And SA Health will be making direct contact with people who are currently quarantining to give them that specific advice. What about vaccination status? Uh, it's a matter for SA Health in terms of how they determine whether a person is eligible to leave uh, isolation after seven days instead of 10. Um, but one of the factors will be the fact that the person concerned has been 24 hours clear with no symptoms. Uh, no, there wasn't, uh, and I think it's fair to say that we've sort of in our third, or we've seen our third week of intense activity through Mad March, and we haven't seen those um, hospital hospitalisation numbers changing dramatically as a result of that additional activity. Uh, there was discussion about the current um, events within South Australia. Um, it's a reason for treading carefully in relation to uh, close contact, uh, quarantine requirements and the masks, but that will be discussed next week when we've had more time to consider the implications of these changes, plus the changes we made a fortnight ago. So there's, there's no changes to masks at all in terms of people picking up their children from childcare and dropping them off or anything like that? No changes to masks at this time. Um, and there are some sectors that require masks that aren't written into the direction. That's a matter for individual businesses, but we will be discussing it further next week. If you want to see a spike in um, cases or hospitalisations, will you consider reimposing some restrictions you've removed today? Uh, that's always a possibility. Um, I think people are feeling very positive in relation to where South Australia sits in managing COVID-19. Um, the behaviour within the community is an indicator of that, I would suspect. Uh, the, uh, the caveat is always there, that if we saw a significant outbreak that put significant um, pressure onto our health system that we may need to consider uh, what the position is in South Australia. Obviously, we're hopeful that that's not the case. We've come a long way. This is the fourth tranche in a series of four relaxations, and I think that the announcements, whilst relatively brief, are significant in terms of freeing up, freeing up activity within South Australia. So we don't want to see uh, restrictions coming back in, but 
we have an obligation to make sure that we are doing the right thing to protect the South Australian community. I'm, I, for one, uh, like many other people, are hopeful that we continue down this current path. Why well, weren't you in a position to make changes to the close contract quarantine requirements that you were for the positive case quarantine requirements? Uh, it's based on the advice from uh, Professor Spurrier and her uh, analysis of um, how people are coping with COVID-19 whilst in quarantine or in isolation. Uh, it's more complex with the close contacts in terms of freeing them up to be able to do certain things within the community. So we need further further time to consider how, how that will look and the impact it will have. This has been a long time coming for the hospitality industry in particular. Is this a relief to be able to finally say that they can go without restrictions? Oh, look, I think everyone can appreciate having to come into a press conference and uh, deliver the bad news about restrictions going in, uh, you know, significant concerns in relation to COVID-19 in South Australia. Uh, is very difficult. Um, it's, it's news no one wants to hear, so it's, it, is, it is good to be able to stand here and provide this much sought after relief to a wide range of activities right across South Australia, including hospitality. Um, and we certainly understand the, the pressures that uh, a whole range of sectors have been under because of the restrictions in South Australia. And I'd just like to acknowledge the fact that notwithstanding the frustration and the impact it's had, uh, the high level of compliance we've had and the, the tolerance of the South Australian community for enduring what's been an incredibly difficult two years. What will it take or where will we need to be for the committee to feel comfortable in easing the mask restrictions? Uh, well, I think we'll have further information about that next week. Um, I know SA Health are working on that as we speak. It was simply not enough time today to deal with it properly. Uh, it is a complex issue. We need to make sure that when we make changes to the, the public activities, uh, that we don't compound any possible outcomes by uh, relaxing other requirements such as masks without giving it due consideration. I think it was a sensible thing to uh, have a discussion today but to reconvene next week and, and further progress that particular issue. I know people are uh, fed up with masks uh, but it is the first line of defence in a pandemic uh, and I would strongly encourage anybody who is thinking about dropping the mask prematurely is if you have contact with vulnerable people, if you're immune suppressed yourself, um, then the most sensible thing you can do is wear a mask. The Premier said um, earlier this afternoon that some mistakes had been made in the handling of the COVID pandemic and that some restrictions could have been lifted sooner. Do you share his view? Uh, look, I won't comment specifically on that, but what I will say is, um, and I, I've said it before, uh, responding to a pandemic is a dynamic and ever-changing situation. Um, there's an immense amount of pressure to take swift action to put restrictions in place to ensure the safety of the South Australian community. And the lifting of those restrictions uh, is done in a considered way. Um, there will be plenty of people who will reflect on the performance of uh, the South Australia Police, um, SA Health and other key stakeholders in managing the pandemic and I'll leave that to them. Will you still be keeping a close eye on hospitality venues, places such as nightclubs, in regards to how they still wear masks on dance floors and things like that? Is that still a consideration we've seen in the past few weeks, some uh, venues come under scrutiny for that? Mm. Um, yes, look, uh, we still do have a team of uh, police. It's a relatively small team, but uh, they are dedicated to monitoring compliance with the current directions. And in every case, uh, the approach is that we take an educative and uh, supportive role within the community, giving people the chance to do the right thing, giving people the chance to correct uh, behaviours that don't align with the directions as they currently sit. And it's only in the last instance or the last resort where we issue expiation notices. We will continue down that path. We're here to work with the community. I think we've been very successful so far in doing that. And it's a reason, one of the reasons why I think South Australia has done so well in managing COVID-19. Uh, I've indicated that that's the period of time that the current extension takes us to. Uh, given where we're at, it is obviously a consideration that we may be coming to a point where we can completely remove the declaration. That wasn't discussed today, um, but it is obviously in our minds in terms of uh, being, being satisfied that there is a justification for that declaration to remain in force. Uh, my team are, are looking at the options. SA Health are looking at how we can continue to safely manage COVID-19. 
It's not going away in 28 days. COVID-19 will still be, still be here. We need to make sure we have the best approach in South Australia to manage that safely and ensure that the system can cope with people who contract COVID-19. No further projections at this point in time as to when that declaration may cease. New South Wales is bracing for more COVID cases in the coming weeks because of the new Omicron variant BA2. And research is, uh, suggests that it's more transmissible and New South Wales is expecting cases will go up as a result. Are you concerned about this, uh, this new kind of variant and will this become the dominant variant here in SA, particularly when we're easing restrictions? I think they're questions for Professor Spurrier and I'm probably the first person to say I don't want to hear anything about a new variant. Uh, let's keep moving in the direction we're moving in. Uh, my hope is if there is a, a, a change to COVID-19 that it's, um, you know, it, people, more people may catch it, but we don't see people getting terribly sick from it and needing hospital care. Do you think business owners can feel confident today hearing this news after what's been such a troubling two years for them? Oh, I, I'm sure uh, a, a huge number of people in a whole range of different sectors will be very pleased to hear this. Hospitality, fitness, people who want to have gatherings at home, uh, people getting married, uh, other significant milestone events that they want to hold. This gives them the ability to do that as they would have done uh, pre-March 2020. Uh, but we just need to remind people we are still in the midst of a global pandemic. People are still getting sick from COVID-19. We still have a personal responsibility to make sure we do the right thing to keep ourselves safe the people we care about safe and vulnerable members of our community safe. Commissioner, can we expect to see you hit the dance floor at all this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am actually going to an event on the weekend and it was my, uh, I took some great comfort in the fact that there was no dancing and I'm going to have to reconsider my position now. Uh, it's not a pretty sight, trust me. Thank you.